So a while back, I actually made a video called the most controversial moments in Smash, and you guys seem to enjoy that video quite a bit. So I decided to make this video a follow-up, even though it's been pretty much a couple months since then. Now, keep in mind, while the Smash Bros. community does have quite its fair share of controversial moments, it's not wise to generalize an entire community off of a couple scenarios. You know what I mean? So this is back when Diddy Kong was actually super broken. And I know we actually have seen this clip before, but that's not what we're talking about this time around. The whole scenario of Diddy Kong being broken actually spawned off, I would say, a pretty funny drama, which actually revolves me but anyway in case you were out of the loop diddy Kong was crazy broken when the game came out to the point that you could like down throw up or someone at 60 and they will die here you can see me actually going and posting hi zero here here to apologize for the diddy drama now you actually cannot see this tweet anymore because i deleted it but essentially i made a tweet where about the first week of the game or the second week of the game i pretty much made a tweet and i was like hey i think diddy's pretty dumb can we just ban him <laughs> it blew up to the point where i was getting hate on youtube comments for it it blew up to the point where I was getting harassed on Twitter. One of the worst dramas I ever got involved in. And it all happened because of one tweet. If you actually want to see how bad it was, if we go back and look at five years ago, BG Bookham actually had to disable the comments and the like and dislike ratio because there was 95% dislikes on this video and every comment was complaining that I don't like Zero, he's a hypocrite, whatever, whatever. Because, you know, I made that tweet about Diddy and then I ended up painting Diddy. So a lot of people were very upset for quite a while every time i ended up playing diddy uh you know ended up just making it worse the hate actually started subsidizing after i made that apology but also after uh, i started winning a lot of tournaments uh with Sheik. but a lot of the hate also stopped because i decided to go captain falcon against mewtwo kid and bracken and a lot of people actually went like "Ooh!" i mean actually just look at sky's reaction as soon as i picked captain falcon hello <laughs> hello lord of the scarves oh captain oh, falcon captain falcon Mewtwo King staying Diddy Kong, adjusting his glasses, and he does not know what he's getting himself. You know Diddy Kong was good when <laughs> even Mewtwo King was playing with Diddy. But a lot of people enjoy the fact that I, you know, I tried to make it a little bit more fun, and it wasn't just Diddy Kong videos. A lot of people appreciated that back in the day. This kind of just goes and shows the culture that is with character strength in Smash. I mean, very similar to the drama with Joker that we actually covered a while ago where, you know, Leo was being the best player, winning everything, and then a lot of people wanted Joker banned. And people also don't like to talk about character bans. I mean, for example, when Bayonetta was winning everything, being super broken, people will actually hate on you if you pulled out for a ban. People will hate on you if you played the best characters. This seems to be like a culture here where like, you know, I found myself in the middle of all this and then blah, a lot of hate. You can actually see when I made this uh, Let's Talk Bayonetta drama video, which is actually a video that you can still watch on this very same YouTube channel. I was honestly terrified of making this video. I legitimately thought it was going to affect me somehow or just everyone was going to hate me for it. Honestly, that's kind of PTSD from that Diddy Kong scenario that I just mentioned. It's just the fact that it really affected me this much. I was really worried about having an opinion on certain things. But no, it is. We're just putting opinion, opinion, opinion after opinion. Whatever. You know, we move forward. And oh, that jump. Oh, oh. And a down smash from Hungrybox. Really solid 3-0 for him, man. He will move on. Oof, and Hungrybox. To winner's finals. That winner's was for winners. Finals. It's actually one of those scenarios where the crowd actually started chanting against Hunger Bucks, which is actually something that happens very often. I mean, the melee community has a tremendous rift against Hunger Bucks to the point where they seem to pretty much excuse it whenever they can. I mean, it's people excuse it with it's the character, it's the way he plays, it's the way he is, just to justify their vitriol and hatred for Hunger Bucks. And you can see this both online and in person. It's very undeserved a lot of the hate that he gets. I actually want to recommend a video for you guys to watch because it will actually give you a lot of context because it's a scenario that it really will take multiple videos for me to cover but actually someone already made a video covering all of it and giving an amazing perspective of it emp lemon actually made pretty much a documentary on how the hate that h bucks gets is undeserved and it actually has millions of views i will really really recommend you guys to go and watch it just to get more information on that there's just so many scenarios of h bucks getting just the lower end of the stick web i mean they're doing the chant and i think it's really unfair as you can see hunger bucks is doing the thumbs up he's trying to be nice where people are you know punching down on him he's not the kind of person that he's going to retaliate in any capacity uh he really tries to be the bigger person in a lot of these scenarios but it almost feels like a lot of the time he just gets bullied for it but Oh. They're doing it so you can hear it. That's not. And it actually makes him quite a bit sad because a lot of the time, Hunger Bucks is a very big advocate for Smash, trying to support not just Melee but Ultimate and Smash in general. He really wants the best for the scene, so I mean, I don't think it's fair whatsoever the treatment that he gets. I think a really interesting scenario to go back and look through is the whole Leffen ban scenario. In case you didn't know, Leffen was actually banned from the Smash Bros. community 
for a while at some point now he wasn't banned globally but he was banned from here he's a swedish player so naturally if you're banned from here that means you pretty much your whole side of the world you can't go to any events and for the time being while he was banned he actually pretty much quit competitive smash in the meantime but why was he banned well first of all it all happened when armada himself actually one of the greatest smash players and potentially the greatest melee player of all time started his threat in february 9th 2013 seven years ago leffen is banned but before we dive into this thread and give you guys some much needed content we need to see where this all started. Started off on a pretty good side, uh, but then I feel like the better he became, his behavior became more and more brutal. We felt like we have to do something because this has been going overboard for a long time. So evidence.zip and that friend on Smashboards was basically a way to tell people our experience uh, with him as a person. What Armada is saying is that, see, no it is when you want to do something similar to that, you go to a website called Twitlong and then you post a Twitlong on Twitter and then you <laughs> write a bunch of stuff about someone. That's pretty much the 2019, 2020 way we go about, you know, solving our beef and drama. But back then, Leffen was actually, for lack of a better word, naturally, uh, canceled. Essentially, what happened is that a bunch of organizers and important people within the Europe community, they released this thread where they pretty much talked about a whole bunch of stuff that Leffen did that was, like, ranging from being a to new players to just, like, maybe name-calling certain people. They were got tired of him, and then they were like, you know what? We don't like you. We're just gonna bang. <laughs> uh, when I'm to release this file, because there's actually a file with all the evidence, the actual file name is called Evidence dot zip even to this day uh it's actually a joke that leffen kind of runs by because i mean it's kind of funny but it wasn't just the european community that had a problem with leffen it was also the american communities we actually already showed this clip before on the channel but this will give you some context that you need but essentially leffen was competing with ice as a teammate against scar and espa who are two very well liked players in the american community for a second that's that's it yeah if i couldn't get over there and this is tight oh Ooh. Ooh, uh, uh, that's fine that's fine yeah. it's what? Oh, uh, oh, uh oh, oh. Are they calling it? So as you can see, one of the players on the other team paused accidentally as this smash rules. You can actually ask your opponent to SD a stuck if they paused. Obviously, it was an accident. And the pause itself and the way the rule is set up is that people can obviously abuse pauses. So you set it up in a way that there's a penalty. So you don't just pause in case the pause is on. Regardless, people were very unhappy because Leffen was actually enforcing the pause rule, which I don't think is inherently grimy, but Generally, people don't see it as nice when you actually enforce the rules. Benito, and they made him do it. So anyway, Scar does the SD thing. We don't even need to worry about him. Yeah. And this game and set. And Team Leffen wins. Yes. There's no handshake. Leffen and I. They're getting booed. And this is why Leffen is the most hated man on Smash Bros. And he's actually living it up. They this actually does end up in a pretty positive note, though. However, um, Leffen ended up taking a break from Smash, accepting the ban for, I think it was a year or a year and a half. He ended up coming back and ended up being very mellow. Uh, for the next couple of years. He apologized. You know, he's pretty much cool with everyone. Most notably, uh, Armada and Leffen used to have a tremendous amount of beef, uh, but now they're actually pretty cool. And I, you know, I've seen them get drunk together at a couple Smash tournaments. So, I mean, this is definitely some of my favorite type of controversies because I don't like when controversies end up on a negative note. This is the type of one that ends up in a wholesome, lovely note. Everybody's friends. <laughs> so this is Ryuga versus Sinji at Big House. This is actually one of the big houses that I hated the most. And also shoutouts because I went to the bathroom to do a number two and then someone turned off the light in the bathroom when they saw someone inside and then I had to do my business in the dark. Not very cool. That was actually a pretty sad memory. Nonetheless, I believe this is loser's bracket. The matchup itself isn't what's relevant. It's actually what's going on with the crowd. This is game three, and it's actually a very tight set. Loser gets eliminated off of the tournament, so you absolutely do not want to lose this set. Keep in mind that there's a lot of, you know, he said, she said about the situation, so I could be slightly off. There were a couple of extremely rowdy members in the crowd yelling that we'll definitely hear throughout the clip. They were yelling a bunch of obscenities at Ryuga's partner, and I believe some of them were in the lines of crossing the line. Ryuga was not very happy. So while, while he's playing Sinji, he's actually talking back to the crowd. Ryuga is a pretty big guy, all right? Like, and he'll mess you up. So I don't really understand why they were trying to, you know, aggravate him here. But alas, sometimes the crowd gets out of control. And I think that's actually a very common controversy with, within Smash. The crowd usually doesn't know how to behave. Sometimes the crowd will take it too far. Tournament organizers don't really step in. Sometimes we get a lot of heated moments. I think this is one of the most controversial moments, though, for sure, because it's actually a scenario where it actually would have gotten physical. There would have probably been a fight had the players not been stopped. 
talking about? Let's go, he's actually bro. popping off on the people who aren't Let's even playing the game, man. I was actually watching the set in the crowd, and he's actually hate playing so well that he's about to two stug on game three, and he actually was really struggling in the set before. And it's almost like the hate fuel him to do better. Now you see everyone in the crowd, the Smash crowd, like, yo, whoa, dog. It's not that serious, dog. Chill, chill, bro, chill, bro, chill. Chill, chill, chill. You actually have to have basic one of the main people running. Big House actually step in. There's a couple other tournament organizers also stepping in, but it was pretty much a couple people in the crowd that Ryuga was addressing. They would have gotten booted off from the tournament if they did not follow these warnings. <laughs> It's funny because everybody at that point in time were playing friendlies, but they were like, <laughs> everybody was like paying more attention to this situation going on than their friendlies. You know, Smash players love drama. Nonetheless, that's pretty much for today's video. We got to talk about a bunch of interesting topics. I kind of wanted to give a little bit of a new spin on some topics we already covered. I also wanted to talk about some common issues that I've seen and also give you guys some new lore on some scenarios that maybe you guys didn't know, or maybe some of them you didn't know, but maybe I gave you some new information. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys around in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.